Now let me uh, give you uh, an advanced example. Actually, uh, this is a kind of fundamental principle in logic. It's A or not A. But um, it turns out that in order to justify that, we actually need uh, the classical contradiction rule. Because all the other rules, it doesn't follow, it's not a part of constructive logic, this statement here. So the classical contradiction rule will simply say, in general, let me remind you what it is. It's simply saying that if we want to to argue for some statement x, one way of doing it is to assume not x, and then from that get a contradiction. Notice, by the way, that it looks very similar to the not introduction rule. This one is called the classical uh, contradiction rule. You just write classical control like it's written in JAPE. So this is like, it, 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 it looks like here. Let me just as a comparison here do the normal not introduction. So in that one you start with the x, get a contradiction, and then you put another a not in front of that. So you see it's similar. In some sense if we applied the, the not introduction rule over here, we would actually get the not not x. Yeah, so in some sense you can say that the classical contradiction rule allows us to strip away this double not here. So that's why it's also closely related to the to another rule called the double negation rule. If you don't have it in, in, in JAPE, you don't normally have it in, in, in the natural deduction system, but it's basically a rule we could add if you wanted. And this rule is saying simply from uh, not not x, we can infer x, that kind of double negation rule. But now let me... Uh, come back to this example, I'll just erase this thing, and then what, what I want us to look at is if we want to to look at this excluded middle, is it also called. So we have like a formula A, we have A or not A. And it turns out this is not a part of, of um, constructive logic. So in order to prove it, we need to use this classical contradiction rule. So here is how it goes. So the classical contradiction rule basically means that we assume we have not a, sorry, we have not, and then we bracket a or not a. We want to show that from that assumption we actually get a contradiction. Now at this stage, it's kind of not so clear how we should continue because we want a contradiction. Let's see how could we get a contradiction. Well, let's look up back here. So we have a statement up here. So something that would be directly in contradiction with that will most natural statement to take is A or not A, because that will definitely be in direct contradiction to, to this assumption we have up here. Um, so that's promising. Now, at this stage, um, it might look a bit fishy in some sense, because uh, that we are, we are trying now to prove A or not A, because recall, overall, we are trying to prove A or not A here. This is like our general problem. Now we are kind of stuck with the same situation, we have to somehow justify A or not A, like we had down here. But now, notice that we actually have made progress, because even though we have to justify the same, we are in a better shape than when we started out, because we now have this assumption up here to work with. So, actually, this is really progress we have made, so we, in order to, we, we still have to just try to justify if you want A or not A, but we are now doing it in a context, in a box here, where we have this extra assumption to work from. And in this stage, uh, we, we can actually say, the question is, uh, how can we justify this line? Is there any chance of justifying A or not A? Well, one way could simply be that we, we approved not A here. That would be sufficient for sure. If I had not A, then I can also justify this line. Um, so this is probably the most inspired moment in the proof that we sort of recognize if you, if you did a not A here, that would be good. In some sense you could say I could also have gone for the A, but the A is harder to see what I can do with. There's not much I can do. If I go for the not A, then we have so at least we sort of automatically can say, well, not A, at least we can do a box here. And probably the way we could argue for not A is that we start off with A and then we show this get to the contradiction. Now we might ask, how can we 
And actually, let's look at what we have justified now. This is an assumption. This one we can justify, provided we have the box here, because we, from A we get a contradiction, so we know not A. That was another introduction. This one is uh, an OR intro from the line before. We have not A, then we also have A or not A. This one is a directly contradiction, that is like a not elimination contradiction rule, if you want, between this line and this line. And this last one was a, a classical contradiction rule. We assume this, we got a contradiction, we got that. So that is classical contradiction rule. But this one we haven't justified. So we have neither contradiction here. So now let's go back and see how could we get a contradiction. Well, we have something up here. Maybe we could get... Well, you can say there are two possibilities. Strictly speaking, I could put a not A here then you would have a contradiction. Alternatively, I could put A or not A, because then if I compare to line 1, you can see they are directly, directly in contradiction to each other. And as it happened, we actually done now, we can justify that line because we have A, so therefore we also have A or not A. So this is an, an OR intro. So now the whole proof is actually justified. So this is how you. So you can see we can we can pr prove the excluded uh, middle. We can prove a or not a. We can use that to prove that by use of the classical contradiction rule. Now um, let me do it in JAPE so you can see that more more neatly. Um, so I want to we want to prove we have a or not a. So here we need the classical contradiction rule. Let me actually at this stage explain. Uh, I also did that in class. Uh, explain why why uh, it is that we know that we cannot prove this in constructive logic. We, why we need the classical contradiction rule, and the reason for this is that uh, constructively, if we can every time constructively you prove an or, that you can uh, there is actually have to be a proof either for the first part of. And the second part. So, in, in some sense, if you prove this without in, in the constructive logic, then either we can actually prove A or we can prove not A. But none of these are actually tautology. There's no way in general we can argue for A, neither can we argue for not A. So, that's one way you can see that it cannot be proved by um, uh, purely constructive rules. Now, so if we do this, so far so good. So, and now we go forward and we do uh, let's see if we do a uh, not elimination let's see if that works in JP yes it did so this was also how we, how we did it by hand before let me go backwards and do a uh, uh, an or intro preserving right now now I'm just going over the proof we did before um, by hand. So the not A, that is automatic. So suppose we are here in the proof. I just want to reiterate. So we have we want to justify not A. But the not automatically, it's the first thing we do is we put a box on top and then use a, 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 a not introduction. We go back and do a not introduction, as we have here. Now we're almost done, but we need somehow to, to justify that contradiction. And that's what we can uh, do by combining these two and doing a, a not elimination. And now we're almost done. You see, the only, now we need to justify this part, but that follows from line one. We go backwards and we do a all into preserving the left, I think. Yes. So see here we have the full proof, full annotated proof, um, and this was an advanced proof. I mean we have discussed it also in class. The very same proof. Uh, it's um, it's, a, it's a tricky one because there are some inspired moment we need. And one one thing maybe worth noticing is that in some sense we have to we are arguing for a or not a three times in the proof. First here originally outside you know any box we want to argue this 
But then we somehow how again find ourselves in a situation that we want to argue for A or not A. Now the point is that you're doing that in a context, in a box where we have some extra assumptions we have more to work with. But still, then a bit later we find ourselves again in a situation where we are arguing for the very same thing. Again we are arguing for A or not A. But now notice we are in a context where we even have more assumptions, because not only do we have that assumption, but now we are also working under that assumption. So that's sort of um, how it works.